My name is Gerald Deegan. We're here on Rampark Farm, um, just outside Mullingar in County Westmead. There's um, 140 acres here. Uh, in 2012, I planted over 100 acres in forestry, and the rest is a small suckler herd, a calf to beef. It has been an organic farm since 1999. I've always loved timber and I've always loved trees, and there's no way that I could look at somebody else walk in the fields that, and I couldn't go out and do it. So going into forestry, it was, cre it was creating a security, number one, for me in the future. And then it, all the other positives that I added into that as well, like for, for nature, living in nature, from a biodiversity point of view, all these positive things came into play. And it was a no-brainer for me then, really, after that. I got in touch with a local forester, uh, a very good man, and we planned the whole thing out. He was very open to what I would like to have, and he told me what I could have. So <laughs> between the two, we created uh, a forest that's roughly 50-50 hardwood softwoods. In the softwood side, we have Norway spruce, Scots pine, generally European larch. Then we'd have maybe some Douglas fir as well. On the hardwood side then, we had ash, oak, beech, sycamore. They were the main crops. There was some alder, some birch as well. And then a, a lot of amenity trees then that we'd have planted all around the farm. Along the pathways then, we planted loads of different, up to nearly 60 different species of trees, like your, every tree that you could think of, between your limes, all the different oaks as well, your red oak, um, walnut, chestnut, your sweet chestnut, your harsh chestnut, down to your smaller trees, your, your crab apple, here behind us, the, the rowan tree, cherries, bird cherry, field cherry, it's, it's, it's fabulous. So as you go around the, around the, the forest, there's always something new to see. There's all those different sounds to hear. It all leads to creating a, a, a more diverse environment, which brings leads and brings more biodiversity into the, into the area. Personally, the first thing would be mental, mentally. The, 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 the peace and tranquility that, that brings to one's mind as, as you walk through the forest, as you walk through the forest, the, the amount of time I spend in here, each tree is like a, like a calf or a chicken to me. Uh, and they all have their own characteristics as well. They all add something to the story. And if, if, if our mind is not right and our, and our physical being is not healthy, we're at nothing. After that, the economic side of things, we have to live, we need, we need an income. So it provides that as well. Um, I am very passionate about continuous cover, pro silva, and that would be the ethos I would be following here. As, as this forest progresses, there'll be light thinnings taken, taken on, and it will be promoted in such a way that there'll always be trees growing here. We need to be able to go in with early intervention. Waiting two or three years for a license, that's crazy stuff. I've been waiting four years for some schemes to run through. And there's hundreds and hundreds of other farmers out there willing and ready, if allowed, to take care of the forest. And it's so frustrating for them and for me that we can't go in and tether it and allow the forest to reach its full potential, especially in carbon sequestration. If we were letting a thing sit there and, and depriving it of its, its, its potential, we have a lot to answer for. Forestry is an aspect, not one against the other. I run both, I run a beef system as well, and they both go hand in hand together. It's not forestry against conventional farmer. Both have huge potential, if allowed, progress and develop to work for biodiversity and work for humankind.